Today I'm going to take a photo like this and show you how to change the background and do some creative things to it and turn it into a mug shot like this. The first thing to do to make this into a mug shot is make two more layers. So come over here and choose this picture layer and come down here and duplicate the layer. We're going to do it twice. And one more. Now we have three copies of the same layer. Now come up here and click on the eye on the very original layer, the very bottom one, and not show it. Then we're going to come up here on the top layer and double click it. Change the name. I'm going to call this one background. And this other one we're going to call head. And now we're going to come over here and save it. Click File. Then come down here and click Save. I'm going to click Save As just to show you how to do it in case you don't. Choose a location. This file, file and folder is good. Give it a name. and click save. Now we need to change the background color and separate the head from the background. And to do that, make sure you have your background layer selected. Come over here, choose your zoom tool, and we're going to draw a mask around this. And we're just going to do a little area at a time. It'll look better and it'll be easier. So zoom in, then choose the free select tool and click it. Come down here where it says feather edges. Make sure you have a check mark in that box. And you want your radius at 10. Then come over here, pick a spot and where the cloth meets the background and click. And then come a little distance and click and click. And you just do this all the way around and the more clicks you have, the more spots you choose, the um, more rounded it'll look later on when you zoom out. Okay now when you get down the bottom here, click. Then you can come down here in the empty area and click. Come over here like this, and come up here like this, and come on over, click, and now double click, and it closes the mask. Then you come over here, choose your fill tool, and make sure you have white as the foreground color. Come down here where it says affected area, and make sure fill whole selection is checked. Then come over here and click and fill the area. Then zoom out. Control Shift J zooms out. And then choose select none. And grab your zoom tool. Zoom in again on another area. Choose your free select tool and do it again. And do that all the way around the whole picture. Okay, the reason I'm back is I made a mistake and I thought I'd show it to you. Right along the edge here, there is a dark line. I'm not sure if you can see it, so I'm going to zoom in. I didn't crop close enough. You can see it here and here. And I'm actually going to zoom in a little closer. Okay, now I choose my free select tool again. And I'm just going to come on here where it's right and choose that spot. And I'm going to come down here. Put 
Let's use this. And I don't have to make the clicks as close as I did before because I'm zoomed way in right now. Out here, up here, double click, choose your fill tool. And fill it. And choose select none. And you can see it looks much nicer here. And I'll zoom out so you can get a good look at it. Much better blend. So I'm going to fix this and continue around. And when I'm done, I'll show you what to do next. Another thing you can do to save yourself a lot of zoom in and out is make a mask close to the head and body and fill that in first like this like come here click just go around it like this nothing fancy Fill it, select none, zoom in, and now you have, don't have to keep zooming in and out to get close to the picture when you're working on it. I'll be back when I'm finished. Alright, sometimes you get a jagged edge like right here where you didn't quite line up your mask right and the easiest way to fix that come over choose your paintbrush choose one with a semi soft edge this has a hardness of 0 0.75 and come over here and line it up so that that point is like that and just click a couple times I actually clicked about six uh, six or seven times, but it gets rid of the jagged edge. Okay, I've completed selecting and changing the background. And now we're going to fix a mistake I made earlier. Over here on the left, the head layer that has the original background, we're going to delete it. I'm going to choose the background layer. We're going to choose duplicate. Now we have background copy and background. I'm going to change the uh, background copy name to head. Okay, we need to add an alpha channel to the head layer and the background layer. And everybody tells you, oh, add an alpha channel, but they never really explain why. So I'm going to demonstrate why you need to add an alpha channel. Over here on the right, you can see I've added a green layer. You don't have to do any of this. I'm just doing this for demonstration purposes. The only layer I have showing is the head layer. I have the fuzzy select tool. I'm going to click on the white area. And it creates a mask. I'm going to hit the delete key. And it's black. Now I'm going to activate the, the green layer. And nothing changes. So now I'm going to show you what happens when you need add the alpha channel. I'm going to undo all this and add an alpha channel. Be right back. Okay, so now we add the alpha channel to the head. So right click on the head layer. Scroll down the bottom near down the bottom and it says add alpha channel. Click on that. 
Take a fuzzy select tool, click on the white, hit delete. And now you see it's transparent. So now if I turn on this green layer, I've changed the background. Okay, so now I'm going to get rid of the green layer and undo all this and I'll be back with what to do next. All right, I've gotten rid of all the alpha channel stuff and I'm back to where we left off. So right, the head, the head layer already has the um, alpha channel. So now we've got to put it on the background layer. Right click on the background layer. Select add alpha channel. Then choose the head layer. And choose your fuzzy select tool. And then make sure feathered edges is checked and the radius is at 10. And then click in the white area. And hit delete. Now remove the eye from the head layer. Add it to the background layer. Select the background layer. Choose select. Invert. And now hit delete. And now is a good time to save it. File. Save. Okay, now we're going to add a drop shadow to the head layer. So we need to choose the head layer. And we need to turn it on so we can see it. And I'm going to do select none. And I'm going to shut the background layer off for a split second. And if you look around the edge, you can still see a little bit of white from when we um, did the mask and separated them. So I'm going to turn it back on. I'm going to choose head. And I'm going to undo and undo till I get select and get my mask back. Then I'm going to choose select. And I'm going to choose shrink. I'm going to change this in my case to 3. You need to experiment this with this. But you, if you did a good job of um, cropping really close, 3 should be good. And you don't want to check mark and shrink image from border. Click OK. And then go up here. Choose filters. Light shadow. Drop shadow. And set your offset X and offset Y at 0. Put your blur radius at, oh, go with 400 or so. Color black. Make sure there's no check mark and allow resizing. And your opacity 67, eh, try 70%. And click OK. Now, you can see the shadows on the white wall. If the shadow ends up being on his head, go up to Edit and click Undo, and then go up to Select and choose Invert, and then redo the drop shadow. That's all you got to do. Don't panic. And choose Select None right now, and that white is gone. It doesn't show the shadows covering it. Well, actually, it's because we shrunk the um, the mask we had and if you end up with a really like a dark line around here when we you did the shrink up here 
shrink on the select shrink when you did that you shrunk it too much that's all all there is to it so just um just undo it all and then don't shrink it as much and, and then redo the drop shadow or if you saved it the last time I told you to you can come up here to file and then choose revert and then try it again I think we're gonna call it quits and call this part one I could have made this video quite a few minutes shorter but I thought you should understand what the alpha channel does and why you do it and um, why you do the shrink before we do the drop shadow and the, another two reasons why we separated the head from the background one of the reasons you separate the head from the background is so you get the proper drop shadow and the other one is so you get so we can do the lines on the wall easier and that's all there is to this lesson in the next lesson I'll show you how to make the lines on the wall how to put them behind the head line them up and space them and I'll show you how to make the mugshot number that's it for now hope this works out for you please comment rate subscribe give it a thumbs up if you liked it thanks for watching bye